All right. It's so good to be back in the podcast studio. We took a break and uh, we're going to be posting some stuff. So stay tuned for that. And eventually there's going to be some video to go with this. Um, But for now it is audio and I'm here with my dear friend, Mason. What's up, Mason? What's up, dude? Uh, You know, it's Monday. Yesterday was a long day and um, we had we had two services, which those were awesome. And then baptisms, and then we came back. Had to flip the foyer. We had Connect class, and there was about 35 people joining the church, which is exciting. 19 salvations uh, yesterday during services, and I think 11 baptisms, yeah. something like that. So, really cool. Dude, it was a good Sunday. It started rough, though. <laughs> like, let's be real. It started rough. <laughs> it did start rough. That is I don't true. know why I was telling you earlier. <laughs> I forgot this happened. It's so funny. Oh, I, I feel like I woke up to the wrong side of the bed. Well, Andrew forgot to wake up. So Andrew overslept. <laughs> he did. He wasn't. He's usually here by the time I'm here. So true. Anytime I'm pulling out of my driveway and I still see his truck over there, I'm like, oh no, Andrew is asleep. Didn't he say that his daughter woke him yep, up? Yep. Yep. They had a long night and uh, he overslept. But but he made it. He made it, and worship was amazing. It was so good. Yeah. But we also were having to fill the baptismal that morning. It's true. And we had no hot water in this the building. This is true. This is true. I don't know why there was no hot water in the building, but it was. Uh, we had a flashback back to when we when the pipes froze. And there and was we, nothing. Yeah, we couldn't have coffee. The bathrooms were closed down. It, we, we had no water. And so... At least we had cold water. No. This, oh, no, this, time, this time, yeah. This, this time, is better we, than yeah. nothing. There's yeah. better than nothing. It's so true. So I remember... True. You were just, you were like, bro, you got to think, put your thinking cap on, yep. figure out what to do. Yep. Because the last time we did cold baptisms, everybody was like, that water was cold. So how did we do baptisms, Mason? Listen, we, we came up with the idea <laughs> to so, fill it with the so boiling crazy. water from the coffee machines. They've got these like little tabs on the side that you can, and I, I just stood there with a five gallon bucket and just waited for it to fill up with hot water. And I was, I was convinced these buckets were going to melt at one point. They got a little soft, but it worked. The only downside is then the coffee machine has to cycle back over yep. and warm it up. And I had to make the decision, what's more important? Baptisms? Warm, or coffee. <laughs> and what did you choose? Coffee. I'm not gonna lie oh my coffee. goodness! Listen, we could come back. We came back to it after <laughs> second service and refilled it with hot water. Uh, it worked. So the urgency was the coffee, yes. and then we came back into bathroom. I mean, you remember when the pipes froze? People were upset. They could have cared less if yeah. there was a bathroom, but they needed their coffee. It's basically like a social experiment. We, when we ran out of coffee, there was a line at the coffee bar, and people were angry. And then I got to mention it in the sermon and make people feel, you know, convict bad. them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, convict them because of their need for caffeine. And as I'm drinking a Celsius, <laughs> hey, I got my Red Bull right here. <laughs> well, dude, we started a new series yesterday in Ephesians. Yeah, our church, all of our campuses are doing that. Uh, but you started it a little bit different than everybody else. You started at the end of Ephesians. What what made you do that? Well. Um, yeah, several campuses decided to start with the end in mind. Uh, and, you know, Paul ends in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, and he's talking about spiritual warfare. And so, you know, just putting on the armor of God and the importance of doing that. And, you know, yesterday we talked about it's not a recommendation. This isn't like, hey, if you think about it or if you get around to it, it's like, hey, this is what you need to do if you plan to stand when the evil day or the day of evil comes. So, yeah. Mm, That's good. That's, I love when, like you mentioned this on Sunday that it never tells us to take off the armor. Mm. It never tells us to take off this armor, but it says, and it reminds us to put it on daily. And I think it's something that I don't think about often, but if we're having to put it on daily, then where where are the moments that we're taking it off in our life? Like, where have you seen that you've taken off the armor, even subconsciously? Yeah, and I think that's what it is. Like, as a as a Christ follower, I think it's it's like you're you're not thinking like, oh, I'm taking off the armor of God now. This is where I take off the breastplate of righteousness and the the feet fitted for the peace of the gospel. And you know, it's you're not you're not thinking about it. It happens, I think, when you're thinking about other things. 
Uh, I think busyness is one of the quickest ways to um, unintentionally take off the armor of God. Mm -hmm. I think I know that I can speak from my, like, just personally. But then I think also anytime you do something that completely contradicts the piece of armor that you're supposed to be wearing. So I think about peace, um, you know, the feet, the shoes. Um, And one of the ways to lose my footing in life and in my walk with God is when I choose anxiety, fear, uh, worry, and stress, which ultimately is me taking or trying to take control of something. And then I'm worrying about it because I'm, I'm using today's strength for tomorrow's burdens, right? Mm-hmm. We've heard that before. And that, then I've kind of forfeited this peace that I have access to because of the power of the gospel. And so I could go through the list like the, I mean, yeah, but that's, I think it happens subconsciously. That we take it off. Yeah. You know, you talked about each different armor piece you could spend about 45 minutes on uh, because they all do serve an important role for a different reason and a different thing. But you and I both talk about uh, war stuff every once in a while and old tactics and all these things. It's just fascinating. I feel like for most guys, it's fascinating. Uh, But what do you think is the most important of these armor pieces? Uh, That's a great question. I think that, um, you know, we talked about the belt of truth that holds everything uh, together. Um, and I would, I mean, I'm going to take the easy answer here and talk about the sword of the spirit. Amen. Uh, first Peter five, you know, it says, be alert and of sober mind, uh, your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And, you know, we joked about, uh, he's like a lion. He's not a lion. He's, he's like imitation crab meat. He's not the real deal. We serve the one true God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah. And, you know, Satan is a counterfeit. He's a liar. Um, And what I've realized in my walk personally, and I see this so often in in the church, is that so many people don't know what is a lie because they don't know what is true. Mm. And so I think that the sword of the Spirit is so important because the Word of God is the truth. And all scripture is useful in teaching, rebuking, correcting. All scripture uh, comes from the mouth of God. And so it's like, man, we have to have the sword of the spirit. Yeah. And so I feel like that's kind of like a cop out. But No, I mean, that. It, what's so funny, and uh, any of our high school students who were there on Sunday, uh, honestly, we were probably feeling a little deja vu because we didn't share notes. We didn't talk about any of this. But a week before this, I spoke on Jesus being tempted in the wilderness and literally gave a very similar illustration about if we don't know truth, the enemy is going to twist and distort any scripture because he knows the word of God yeah. better than we do. Yeah. He's, he's seen it time and time again, and he's trying to use that to twist it. So I don't feel like it's a cop-out answer for it. It's, I mean, it's the one thing that God gives us that is offensive, not defensive, which I think is so important to to be aware of is that it's an offensive thing. It's something to defend ourselves right. more than just to take the blows of the enemy. It's how we combat against it and fight against that right there. You talk about uh, in Ephesians 6, it talks about the dark forces and the principalities that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but that can be a very overarching big topic that people don't even talk about anymore. People aren't talking about it in the church and you know, in my upbringing in a Lutheran church, we didn't talk about spiritual warfare a lot. Mm-hmm. So could you give just a brief explanation of what is spiritual warfare? Yeah, I think when you, well, you, I think you could start by just saying, what is warfare? It's when two people or two parties or two forces are coming against each other with a goal of destroying the other party or the other mm-hmm. group or the other person or however you would look at it. So spiritual warfare would be, Uh, The unseen things that are not visible, that are not natural, they're not in the physical realm, and it is two forces coming together. One is trying to destroy destroy the the other. We know the end of the story, that Mm -hmm. we have victory in Christ. As a Christ follower, we have access not only to the armor of God, but we have access to the Spirit of God that lives inside of us, and we have victory because of Jesus and what he did on the cross. But so many believers, to answer your question— 
don't realize that they have access to these things mm -hmm. because like I said earlier, they don't know the word. And so when we don't know the word, we don't know what we can do when the fight comes. Mm -hmm. And so, so often just because we are tempted or just because there is something happening in the spirit, in the spiritual realm, uh, and, and obviously, you know, like we said, we're not a, your, in, your enemy is not your neighbor. Your enemy is not your coworker or your boss or your, you know, your, your kids or mother-in-law or whatever it may be. Your enemy is the devil. And he oftentimes uses pieces or people like kind of like a chess player mm -hmm. um, and, and creates this warfare that we see in the physical. But it's just important to know that there's something spiritual that's behind this. And so I would just say anything evil in the world has some type of spiritual uh, being behind it. And we know that Satan is not omnipresent. Um, so a lot of people are like, man, Satan's like tempting me. Satan's trying to get me. Well, yes, that's, I would say it's partially true. Um, but there's demons. There's there's demonic activity. Mm. Um, the the um, I think so often we give Satan way too much credit um for you know just our own poor choices mm -hmm. and so like me choosing to eat an entire bag of oreos that was not the devil like that was just seth being like you know driven by my food emotions like mm -hmm. <laughs> or i could go down the list like if i'm speeding i get pulled over it's like man that was the devil well no i chose to speed in a, a situation where i should have been going the speed limit not everything that happens that's bad is from the devil. Mm. Um, but yeah, spiritual warfare, it's a, it's a spiritual thing. And like we, like we talked about on Sunday, it's like we cannot fight a spiritual battle with physical things. Yeah. It has to be spiritual things, which brings back to the armor of God. For sure. And, you know, I had it written down, but this is my next question is like, how do we avoid this being something that we try to justify is like, oh, it was just spiritual warfare. Like, he's the reason I was late to work today. He's right. the reason I lost three jobs. No, you just ain't good at your job. Like, <laughs> you keep do, showing up late. That's how why. do we avoid justifying that? Using that as a cop out of just saying, hey, this is spiritual warfare. I'm being attacked right now. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I would say, man, be very slow to blame everything on anyone else or the devil. Take responsibility for your actions. Mm -hmm. um, be responsible. Be a responsible human being. But yes, I, you know, you've probably heard the phrase like, don't go looking for a devil under every rock. Mm. And I think that is so true. I think that that oftentimes Christians will make everything a spiritual thing, even though I don't want to um, dilute the fact that almost everything is a spiritual thing. Um, but sometimes we have just bad decision making and which leads us to things that are unfortunate. And then we try to blame it on something or someone else when in all reality, it was just us, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> you mentioned warfare being something as two parties, two opposing forces going at each other. If that's the case, what part do we play in this warfare? The enemy is attacking us. We can, we can say that they're are demons after us, there's all this spiritual warfare, but then doesn't that mean we have a part to play in this? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, we talked about yesterday to be strong in the Lord. Paul wrote, uh, I think it was four different times in that passage in chapter six to stand, he says, and then after you stand, stand firm and then mm. stay standing. And, and you know, uh, I've heard it said this way, the opposite in this context is not sitting, the opposite would be to turn your back and run or mm -hmm. to turn your back in fear and retreat, which then leaves your back exposed to the enemy. And so I would just say it's important to do two things. Um, when it, as it pertains to spiritual warfare or temptation of any kind, um, to stay suited up. Don't take off the armor of God, which we've talked about. But I think also it's just keeping your head faced toward the battle. I mm. think so often we get distracted. Like I said, I don't think it's intentional. I don't think people are like, oh, I'm going to walk off the battlefield or I'm going to turn my back to the enemy or I'm going to. No, I think it happens because we get so distracted with mm. life. And then we become unaware and we lose focus that we are in a spiritual battle. And then like I, when I was talking about that on Sunday morning, I could see the light bulb going off for people. It's like, cause we got up, you know, we got dressed, we drove to church, we got our coffee, we high five some people, we smiled, 
you know, we walked through the doors, we got our seat, lifted our hands in worship, you know, we're chugging the coffee, we sit and Seth preaches a subpar message and, you know, all these things go through. And then at the end of the the day, the only big decision we've made for the day is where are we eating lunch? Mm. When in all reality, uh, we should have made a decision as soon as our feet hit the floor in the morning that we are in a spiritual battle. And I have to make a decision to be suited up today to honor the Lord, to get in the word, to man, to pray and ask for help because there's a spiritual battle taking place. How do you not let that scare you, though? Well, I think if you don't know the end of the story, it will always scare you. Mm. Uh, you know, I talk with people all the time. Well, what do you think about end times? What do you think about? And, and man, I, you know, I can talk about those things, but I just choose to find joy in the present moment. I don't know how this whole thing is going to pan out. I don't know. Um, I do, you know, people, people think of the craziest things. You know, I, I have friends that are like die hard preppers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lots of friends that are, I have family members that are diehard preppers. And it's like, I think so often uh, <laughs> people spend so much energy, so much time, so much money uh, investing in things that are in the physical, when in all reality, we should be investing in things in the spiritual. Thanks for tuning in to the podcast. We hope that this encouraged you and could build you up in your faith. We're excited for where this is headed and we hope to see you Sunday.